so now the next concept that you need to understand is actually integration okay so normally when you uh, look at a curve right so let's take any uh, curve of the shape if you looked at mathematics what happens is that the area under the curve is very important that is area under the curve is very important and the area under the curve can be determined by integration okay so again i won't go into too many details but uh, you know this uh, area under the curve is useful in terms of when you want to quantify okay so in nmr spectroscopy what we normally see are extremely quite uh, sharp peaks okay so what we normally see are very sharp peaks and so therefore what is useful to know is that when you integrate it so the integration is represented like this and when you integrate it the height of these peaks okay so the height of these peaks become important okay so again we can look through this in more detail in a later course but let's say this is uh, this uh, height is uh, 6 mm and this is 18 mm okay so now what we can say is that the ratio of the peak is 1 is to 3 okay so again remember this is chemical shift which is also represented as delta and the unit is ppm okay so this ratio uh, is 3 to 1 all right so for example when you look at a molecule such as uh, ch3 c double bond o h so when i when i record the nmr spectrum of this uh, don't worry too much about the position of these peaks as yet we'll we'll get to that uh, very soon so let's say this is zero and uh, now i have to slightly extend the scale a little bit because of the oh so 2 4 6 8 10 12 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 
these regions. So, as we already know, so this is where uh, tetramethyl silane comes. So, it is Si, Me, I am sorry, CH3, CH3, CH3 and we already discussed that uh, silicon is less electronegative. So, less electronegative and therefore, it shows up at around uh, at 0. Okay? And keep in mind, we are looking at these uh, hydrogens over here. Now, when compared with silicon, carbon is obviously more electronegative. So, if we look at you know CH, CH2 and CH3. Okay? So, these are hydrogens uh, which are sp3 hybridized. Okay? So, when I look at these hydrogens that is CH, CH2 and CH3 and if they are connected only to carbon, then since carbon is more electronegative compared to silicon, we can expect it to be in this region that is between 0 and 3. Okay? And you know the uh, so I'm just going to draw it over here. So this is the CH2 can be expected to be here. We'll look at in more details very soon. Now, when you add an electronegative atom, for example, let's say you add an OR that is uh, an ether. That because the more electronegative atom, so these hydrogens are going to we are talking about these hydrogens because this is going to be more electronegative that is this OR is more electronegative. So, uh, it uh, becomes more de-shielded. Okay? So, keep in mind that we discussed already that this is the shielded and this is the de-shielded. Okay? So, therefore, being electronegative, oxygen being electronegative, it pulls electrons from, from this uh, carbon hydrogen bond and this as a consequence this hydrogen starts you know, sort of resonating at a higher chemical shift or it is called as more de-shielded. Okay? Now, moving along, uh, we go to the next region which is between 4.5 and approximately 6.5. So, th this is the region where typically olefins show up. Okay? So, where you have R, H, H, R. Okay? So, these hydrogens which are attached to an sp2 carbon typically show up between 4.5 and 6.5. Okay? So, again you can understand that uh, sp2 carbons are more electronegative and so they are going to pull electrons from the hydrogen and make it more de-shielded. The next important region which we are going to use quite extensively is that of a aromatic ring which is a benzene ring. Okay? So, again we will get into more details later about the origin of this, uh, of this effect, but aromatic rings typically show up between 6.5 and 8.5. And lastly, you have the combination of being next to a sp2 carbon as well as an electronegative atom which is in the case of aldehydes. Okay? So, these hydrogens of aldehydes actually show up between 8 and 10. Okay? So, this cartoon looks a little uh, cluttered now, uh, but I, I would urge you to go back and look at any good textbook. Uh, Claydon is a good uh, uh, book to look at and uh, in the edition that we are looking at, uh, this uh, shows up in chapter 3 where uh, it talks about determining organic structures. Okay? And there is also a separate chapter, chapter 13 on NMR. I would urge all of you to go back and look at it. Okay? But bottom line is that you need to understand that NMR spectroscopy uh, allows us to develop a framework where we can understand the local environment around the hydrogen. So, if the hydrogen is connected to a group X okay, and if this X is sp3, I mean this carbon, I am talking, uh, uh, talking about a carbon, but if this carbon is sp3 hybridized, then you have a fairly reasonable idea that it will show up between 
0 and 3 ppm okay now if the x is sp2 hybridized such as an olefin then you have a good idea that it is going to be uh, I am talking about a carbon carbon bond it is going to be around 4.5 to 6.5 okay and now if it is aromatic that is it is attached to a benzene ring then it shows up between 6.5 and 8.5 okay and lastly if the x is uh, attached to an aldehyde I mean to an sp2 and electronegative atom such as an aldehyde it can also be a carboxylic acid if you remember acetic acid one of the peaks showed up at around 10 between 10 and 11. So, these hydrogens actually show up between 8.5 and 10 or sometimes to 12 ok. So, this is a very useful guide for us in understanding where your uh, various functional groups show up ok. Now, we have a good idea about where the proton and MR spectrum shows up, but a similar trend can also be seen in the carbon NMR. So, I am just going to draw out the carbon NMR scale. Uh, so, we know that it is somewhere between 0 and uh, 200 and here uh, you know let us just divide it into 50, 100, 150 and as we discuss this is chemical shift. ppm and uh, so what we normally see is that this region between 0 and 50 is for saturated carbon so r ch3 r ch2 ch3 so these types of carbons uh, show up between 0 and 50 okay and much like the proton nmr the region between 50 and 100 uh, as we saw in proton NMR it was uh, between uh, 3 and uh, 4.5 uh, is when you have a electronegative atom such as an ether R O CH2 let us say R prime ok. So, this carbon again shows up between 50 and 100 ok. In the carbon NMR interestingly both olefins and aromatic compounds which we will look at in detail later show up at around the same range between 100 and 150. So, this is the region where the aromatic carbons show up and lastly as you would have correctly guessed the carbon attached to a, a carbonyl which typically shows up you know is between 150 and 200. So, together these you know if you record the proton NMR as well as the carbon NMR. Uh, you get a very very good idea about what kind of functional groups, what is the local environment etcetera etcetera ok. So, therefore, together this is going to be very useful in determining the structures of molecules ok. Uh, now, what we will do is we will just take a couple of uh, examples and uh, try to understand uh, whether we can you know see whether we can understand the NMR spectrum after looking at the uh, spectrum ok. The first example that we are going to look at is uh, you know let us look at the various groups that are attached to carbon or to hydrogen in a, in a proton NMR spectrum. So, let us say we take 0 to 10. Uh, so, as we discussed this is a CH3 Si CH3 CH3 CH3. So, this is a tetramethyl uh, silane. And now, if you uh, actually record, uh, if you pre prepare a molecule uh, such as methyl uh, lithium, ok, lithium, uh, the electronegativity of lithium is 1.0 uh, and the electronegativity of carbon is 2.5 as we discussed earlier. So, what you would expect is that the carbon which is next to lithium uh, is going to be, uh, you know, uh, quite uh, shielded because the you know this is going to increase the being an electro positive uh, group or a less electronegative group it is not going to pull electrons as much and so it is going to be more shielded ok. It is going to be more shielded. So, if you record the NMR spectrum of methyl lithium it shows up somewhere around minus 
1.94 okay so the methyl lithium as we would have expected uh, shows up uh, in a more shielded region when compared to tetramethyl silane now let's take the example of just ethane which is ch3 ch3 and here the electronegativity of carbon is 2.5 this carbon is 2.5 and so this is around 0.9 so the chemical shift for this is around 0.9 the hydrogen okay so uh, therefore uh, in this example what we see is that there is a almost excellent correlation between electronegativity of the atom attached to the carbon which is next to the hydrogen okay so again i'll just quickly repeat here so uh, lithium the electronegativity is 1 silicon is uh, 1.9 and carbon is 2.5 okay and the chemical shift here delta value is minus 1.94 just draw a line here so that's easy for us to see it for silicon is 0 that is tms and here is 0 0.9 okay so this is an excellent correlation so as the electronegativity increases the chemical shift increases electronegativity increases delta value goes up okay and we can understand this purely by, by invoking the concept of shielding and deshielding so the more uh, shielded the atom is or the more shielded the the group is the the lower the chemical shift okay so you know when we saw in the previous example we saw that uh, you know the uh, electronegativity of the of the group is very important uh, in determining the chemical shift now let's uh, expand the the scope of the investigation and let us take the region you know again between 0 and let us say we take uh, 6 uh, delta uh, ppm. So, what we looked at was uh, for carbon CH3, CH3 the electronegativity of carbon was 2.5 and when we look at uh, these hydrogens which are next to this carbon then it shows up the delta value is around so i'm just going to 1 2 3 4 so 1 2 3 4 and let me call this as as uh, 5 uh, we may not need 6 but uh, so this hydrogen uh, shows up around point delta equals 0 0.9 okay now uh, the next group that i'm going to take is methyl amine okay so the uh, electronegativity of uh, nitrogen is 3.0 so uh, nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon and uh, and this electronegativity continues to be 2.5 and so what we are looking at is again these hydrogens and these show up at, at around 2.5 Okay. So, is this a surprising result? Let us analyze that. So, if you see here what we discussed earlier was tetramethyl silane which is basically silicon next to 4 CH3s. The hydrogens show up at 0 and the electronegativity of silicon is 1.9. Okay. So, what we figured out was that the more shielded that is the more electronegative the group is the hydrogen next to it is going to be more shielded whereas uh, the one which has an electronegative group on it is going to be more deshielded okay so having an electronegativity of 1.9 the silicon has a tremendous influence on this hydrogen which is next to the carbon so similarly uh, methylamine ch3 nh2 the nitrogen being more electronegative pulls electrons more efficiently and makes it you know more deshielded or less shielded okay now does this uh, translate to methanol so let's draw out the structure of methanol 
CH3OH. Again, the hydrogens that we are looking at is this and here the electronegativity of oxygen is uh, 3.4. So, it is more electronegative than nitrogen and uh, so, this uh, the chemical shift for this hydrogen is 3.5 delta equals 3.5. Okay? And lastly, let us look at uh, fluoromethane which is CH3 F and the electronegativity of fluorine is 4.0 and the chemical shift is of this hydrogens, if hydrogen is 4.27. Okay? So, what this tells me is that if I have to draw a plot a table CH3, CH3 let me make two columns here. The first column would be electronegativity of the atom and the second one would be chemical shift. So, CH3 NH2, CH3 OH and CH3 F. So, let us just write down the electronegativities of these atoms over here. So, this is 4.0, this is uh, 3.5, this is uh, 3.0 and this is 2.5. Okay? And the chemical shift is in the order of the electronegativity 0 0.9, 2.5, 3.5. So, this value is actually 3.4, but nevertheless it is pretty close and uh, for fluorine it is 4.27. Okay? So, therefore, if you see here, it perfectly correlates with the electronegativity of the atom. So, if you expand this uh, discussion from lithium to silicon to carbon to nitrogen to oxygen to fluorine, uh, you will find uh, that uh, you know it, it really beautifully correlates with the electronegativity. Okay?